in book form has a very tight integration with Google Classroom. This means that it makes it even easier for you as the teacher to link your family book form books to your Google Classroom class. Just go ahead and sign up with your using your Google account. Check out their ambassador program as well to get a code to save you more on your projects. When you start, you'll create your first project, giving it a project name. We recommend using the year, course name, and project name as your naming convention. After making your payment, you'll be able to select a graphic to use for your school logo. That gets printed on the back of the book. Here's a graphic that students made to represent our classroom. This is a great way to include art and design in your literacy or your history classroom. You simply upload the image and it will appear on the back of your book. That's all you need to get started and you're given a link to the project that's saved on the family book form servers. Let's dive into the dashboard, which is the central hub for all of your family book form projects. Here you'll find links to all of the projects, all of the students and other teachers who might be working on those, and a link to create the assignment in Google Classroom. You see here it has pulled in automatically those classes that are already set up in Google Classroom, and it allows you to give a name for the assignment, a description, some total points that are linked into the gradebook in Classroom, the due date, and then all you have to do is click Create Assignment and you are done. It is set up automatically. You'll get a small confirmation message that the assignment has been created. And when you close that, you'll see other information about the course, as well as a link to view the project in Google Classroom environment, where your family book form project has been automatically set up as an assignment in Classroom. Pretty easy. The student work area for grading is there, so everything is already set up. Back in the stream of the course and in the coursework area, you'll see the card there that has the information about this project in the correct location. From a student view, they see it in their stream and the announcement that it has been made. And when they click on that link, it opens up into the details card, in which they can find more information about the project as well as a direct link to it. Please note, every student has to click on this link in order to generate the book and have it recorded in Family Book Forms dashboard. When they sign in with their account, they're taken to the dashboard. This is where they find links to all of the Family Book Form projects that they've been assigned. Once inside a book, they have a field for the book title, as well as the author's name. For the purpose of this example, I'm pretending to be a student, Avo, who's writing about his family history. Now, an important aspect of his family history has been the concept of shoes, which will be a central theme of his book. He's uploading a high-resolution image that he created with photos from all the shoes of members of his family. After it's been uploaded, he uses the built-in crop tool in Family Book Form to make it fit. Now, pro tip, make sure your, your image is at high resolution so that it prints clearly. So when you export it, make sure it's at the highest resolution possible, suitable for print. Now the main purpose for Family Book Form is to collect personal stories and family histories from relatives of the students. So the way it is set up, it's set up and arranged by person. Each person gets a section, and then under each person, there are a series of chapters related to different parts of their life. Under each of the sec uh, these chapters, there are a series of prompts and topics that help guide them in answering questions and talking about what it is that they were doing and what their life was like. Here you have the record button so you can transcribe automatically as well as directly typing into the form itself. Additionally, each section also has a photo page templates that you can use to include one, two, three, or more photos that are relevant to the chapter, and those are automatically included in the book. Here's a quick look at how to use the voice to text feature of Family Book Form. Pressing the record button takes you to this stage. Make sure you select the English US from the list and we will start our recording. Allow Family Book Form to use your microphone. Hi everyone, I'm Avo and this is my story. It's a story about shoes, actually and it's really quite interesting. We will follow along as my, the members of my family each tell us their story and how it relates to shoes. I hope you enjoy. Depending on how long the recording is, it might take a few minutes for the transcription to complete. Click on the Import Transcription button and then Refresh. It will give you the text and when you click on Insert, it will drop it into the form field right where it needs to go.
So there you have it. You can feel free to edit it as you wish. This lends itself well to English and literacy standards. And you can always go back and find those audio files even after you've published the book. Under my book in your dashboard, there's a link for audio files. Here you see the full transcription as well as the actual audio file that you can play back or download. These would be great to use in class for lesson enrichment, to build student empathy, or to help understand diversity within the classroom. All of the prompts and scaffolding within Family Book Form are customizable. You can edit them to your suit your needs. When you click on any of the pencils, you are able to make changes to the text that you see. In this case, Abo is going to start by interviewing himself, so he will have the first chapter of the book. Students continue through the project interviewing the members of their family to complete the rest of the book. They can add pictures and text to tell the whole story. This is the digital book version that lives online and is available from their dashboard. And it contains all of the text and all of the photo pages and the customizations that they made in the project. On the back of the book is the school logo that they made. When they're done with the assignment, they can go back into classroom and use the turn in feature to indicate to the teacher that they're finished and that it's ready for assessment. Or you could use this for drafting stages as well. So in my teacher dashboard within Family Book Form, I see the project card there. And down at the bottom, there's a link that says Show Students and Teachers. When I pop it open, I see that Alvo has submitted his and that there's a link to it. Now, although there are other students in the class, they aren't shown until they click on the link in Classroom in order to generate their project. So that's an important thing for you to remember. They have to click on the link in Classroom for it to appear in your dashboard as using one of the licenses. So now we can take advantage of all of the features of Google Classroom when we are giving feedback or we are assessing the student work. These little tile cards come up and it'll show you how many people have turned it in. And in this case, when we go and we look at Avo as a student, he's going to click the turn in button. It asks him if he really wants to turn it in and have, have, if he wants to submit his work. He says, go ahead and turn it in. Now that's going to change some things. When we go and we look at the coursework page on Avo's, we see that the card is still there, but that the icon is no longer orange. It's actually gray. That means he's turned it in and that it's out of his control. If I jump over here to my view as the teacher, I notice now that one student has submitted the assignment. When I click on that, it'll filter out those who have turned it in already, which is only Avo in this case. The three others have had it assigned, but they've not filled it or completed it yet. Since this is set up as a graded assignment, I have a point value that I can fill in. It can be based on a rubric or whatever, however you choose to do it. And it has a space at the bottom for me to have a conversation with the student, a private conversation that is just between us. I can return it to the student at any point as well. In this case, I'm going to leave a comment because this is a drafting setup. So I'll leave him some notes here that he'll be able to see when he logs in to his classroom. So now my message has been posted for him. So if we switch over to look at it from his viewpoint, here's the card for the assignment. And when he clicks on the link to the assignment, he'll be able to see the feedback I've given him. It's over here in the private comment section, whereas the class comments in the middle will, will be public for other students to see. He can reply to my private comments, and so we can have a conversation about his performance and about his project. Back out on the student work page, you'll see a summary of all of the information and the comments that I put down for Avo, as well as the other students who haven't yet turned in their assignments. That is the integration between Family Book Form and Google Classroom. I hope you found this information useful, and I can't wait to see the projects that you and your students come up with using Family Book Form and Google Classroom.